The tadpoles haven't changed much from last week, but we can see something interesting happening just here. Here we can see two of the water lice I put into the tank last week. If you saw the last episode, you may remember I put in a mating pair, but we couldn't get a very good look last time, but here is a great view. The larger male is on top of the smaller female. Water lice are also known as water slaters, aquatic sow bugs, and a water hog louse. Its scientific name is Acellus aquaticus. It looks very much like a wood louse, and indeed they are from the same group of crustaceans called isopods. This means they are not insects, but are more closely related to crabs and lobsters. The body is flat and has nine segments, including the head. It has six pairs of legs and two pairs of antennas. There are two species of water slaters found in the UK, and they can be told apart by looking at the head. The common water louse has two white spots on its head, and the one spotted water slater predictably only has one. If we change the camera angle, we can see these have two spots, and so are the common variety. So what's actually happening here? I briefly explained last time out, but what will happen is the larger male will position himself over the top of the female and guard her from other males. He's waiting for her to molt her hard exoskeleton, as this is the only time he'll be able to mate with her. They molt just like wood lice in two halves. The rear part of the exoskeleton gets shed first, followed by the front. During this time, the male will mate with her. He will then guard her until her exoskeleton hardens and no other male will be able to mate with her. The female will then lay her eggs into a brood pouch which is kept on the underside of her body and she will give birth to live babies which will be miniature versions of the adults. You may be able to see at the rear end a pair of feathery gills flicking up and down. This is where they breathe. They are adapted to live in low oxygen environments like you find at the bottom of ponds and they can tolerate moderate levels of pollution. They are omnivores, I did mistakenly refer to them as herbivores last week, but they will feed on decaying plant and animal matter. So this is the bank holiday weekend and I'm not going to see these guys for a few days. So what I want to do is make sure they have plenty of food to keep them going over the weekend. And I also want to top up their water. You can see here, the level has dropped. This is where we had it when we first set up the aquarium and it's dropped down to here. So I'm going to add some distilled water to fill this up. Now if you're filling water in the aquariums at home, you're going to want to use uh, either tap water that's stood for 24 hours at least, you want to use distilled water or rainwater, something like that. Do not use tap water straight from the tap because the chlorine will kill the tadpoles. You need to leave it at least 24 hours before it's suitable to use. So I'm going to get doing that and I'll see you in a bit. I want to finish off this week by showing you something a little disappointing out in the pond. Let's go and take a look. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I thought I'd just share it. There has been some mild vandalism at the pond. There have been a few rocks thrown in, and these rocks were around the edge of the pond and around the garden area, but now you can see them under the water. Also there is a large plant pot, now this was already in the pond and I knew about that, but now you can see it has been broken. It doesn't seem to have affected anything too much, and you can see there are still newts and tadpoles swimming about. But throwing rocks in a pond will almost certainly have killed a few pond creatures. And while the species of newts and frogs that live in this pond, they aren't endangered or threatened. But amphibians are on the decline, and their habitat and lives should be respected. There really is nothing to gain from this kind of vandalism, and this was obviously carried out by small-minded, immature kids. And that's all the attention I want to give them. So on to brighter things. 
Next week, I hope to be able to show the tadpoles growing legs. I really think they're getting close to that stage of development. I can't see it yet, but it won't be too long. So I want to say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next week for some more Frogwatch. Goodbye.